The Avenger. The road to crime ends in a trap that justice sets. Crime does not pay. Avenger, sworn enemy of evil, is actually Jim Brandon, a famous biochemist. Through his numerous scientific experiments, Brandon has perfected two inventions to aid him in his crusade against crime as the Avenger. The telepathic indicator by which he is able to pick up thought flashes, and the secret diffusion capsule, which cloaks him in the black light of invisibility. Brandon's assistant, the beautiful Fern Collier, is the only one who shares his secrets and knows that he is the man the underworld fears as the Avenger. And now, The Avenger and the Coins of Death. Madam Yanina? Yes? Come into tent. Out of range. Oh, thank you. You come to Yanina, the queen of the gypsies, to have your future foretold. Is that not so? Yes. My name is Casper Hobson. A friend of mine recommended you. Sit there, across the table, in the lamplight. I would see your face. Oh, yes, of course. I... Now, cross this old gypsy's palm with silver, and she will call upon the spirits of all Romany to reveal your future to Yanina. Silver, yes. Uh, I have a coin for you here. A, a rare old silver coin. Here, take it. No! No! I curse upon you! Got you! What is it? What's the matter? Oh, this silver is accursed. You are doomed. What are you talking about? A curse upon you! Got you! Go away! Go away! You have no future. Listen here, I have a right to know what you're raving you go about. Go away, Gaggio, get out. Valdo, Valdo, come quick. Drive this cursed one from the gypsy camp. All right, I'll go. But this sort of thing is outrageous. You'll be reported to the Gaggio, police. Go, Gaggio, go. The mark of death is upon you. You have no future. Out of my sight, Gaggio. Go, go, you have no future. <laughs> Climb in the car, quick, Casper. You're dripping wet. Yes, thanks, Tom. Let's get out of here. Casper, you're shaking like a leaf. What's the matter? Start driving, I'll tell you. Now, what is it? Now, that old hag of a gypsy woman. She drove me out. You mean she wouldn't tell your fortune? That's right, Tom. She shrieked at me like a mad woman. <laughs> told me I had no future. Oh, that's nothing to get so upset about, Casper. Probably her stock way of getting rid of customers after she gets her money. Yeah, that's what I would have thought, too. Except she didn't take my money. She didn't take your money? No, she threw it away from her as though it had a plague on it. 
Then she started shouting that I had no future. Oh, don't take it so seriously, Casper. All this fortune-telling is the bunk anyway. I'm surprised you ever bothered driving out here over this muddy country road in this weather. Our business worries can drive a man to any extreme, Tom, and I am worried. Now, look, Casper, you're on the very threshold of a million dollars. That C3M you've invented will revolutionize the whole industry. That's just the trouble. It'll drive hundreds of established companies out of business and make a legion of enemies for me. Be, be careful, Tom. Tom, you almost went off the road there. The cliff dropped sheer all along here. Yeah, it's raining so hard I can hardly see. This muddy road's as slippery as glass. Well, take it easy. My nerves are bad enough as it is. Ah, uh, good dinner will fix you up, Casper. We're coming to the summit of the hill now. It won't be so bad from there on in. Yeah. Gee, look at that rain. Yeah. Hey, Tom, we've got a flat. Steady the car. I can't. We're skidding. The brakes won't hold. We're going over the cliff. Jump, Tom, jump! Fern. I picked up that wild music on the telepathic indicator again. Where do you suppose it's coming from, Jim? I'm not sure, Fern, but it sounds like gypsy music. Could be coming from that gypsy camp several miles out of town. Fern, quick, turn up the volume a little. Yes, Jim. What happened, Jim? Suddenly, right in the midst of the music, there was a crashing sound, and then complete silence. Maybe the storm cut off the reception. Well, that's not very likely, Fern. Telepathic messages aren't usually affected by elemental disturbances. When the indicator suddenly loses contact with a strong impression like that, it usually means that the thought itself has been terminated by violence. Oh, stay with it, Jim. Looks like this may be something important. Were you able to pick up anything more, Jim? No, not a thing, Fern. Oh. Well, that must be Inspector White, Jim. Remember, we invited him to dinner. Oh, yes. Uh, turn off the indicator, Fern. Yeah. I'll let the inspector in. Right, Jim. Oh, just when I finish up all the reports on one case, something else turns up. Good evening, Fern. Oh, hello, Inspector. We'll be ready to go as soon as I filed his reports. Is it still raining? Well, it's beginning to let up a little now. Some storm, though. Anything new at headquarters, Inspector? Not a thing, Jim. Had a nice, quiet, routine day for a change. Now, I'll get it, Fern. Hello? Oh, yes. Yes, the inspector just came in. Just a minute, please. It's for you, inspector. Oh, what's up now? Hello? Inspector White speaking. What? Holy smoke, it would have to happen way out there. Okay, yeah, I'll go right away. What's the trouble, inspector? A car went over the cliff out near Marsden. An accident. But I've got to get out there and make a report. Oh, we'll go with you, Inspector. We can have dinner when we get back. Yes, uh, this may be the very thing I picked up on the indicator a while ago. Now, listen, Jim. You can come along if you want to. But don't try any of your hunches. This is an accident. <laughs> Isn't this the road we took to the scene of the accident last night? That's right, Fern. Well, why are we coming out here again? Jim, you're holding back on me. What are you up to? Well, I did a little checking when I got home last night, Fern, and discovered that this Hobson accident was the second to occur at that same spot within a few months. Oh, in other words, you're suspicious? Yes. But this is a very dangerous piece of road, Jim. In, in wet weather, I can easily see how a car might skid over the side. Yes, but what was that car doing out here last night? This is really a private road, and no one in his right mind would drive over it in a storm if there were any other way of reaching his destination. Well, this is all farmland around here. Here's the spot where the car went over the cliff. Uh, I want to take a look around. Come on, Fern. What are you looking for, Jim? The tires on that car were badly ripped. I wonder if that happened before the car went over or when it crashed. Well, let's see if we can find anything. The rain seems to have done a good job of covering up all traces of the skidding. Mm, the mud's too deep to do much walking around here. Yeah. They might as well drive on, Fern. There's not a trace of a clue here. Look, 
Jim. There's a fork in the road just ahead. Yeah, and there's a mailbox there, too. I, I want to see the name on it. Oh, I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill, Jim. This is just an old country road. Can you make out the name on the box? Yeah, it's uh, Philip Peters. Now what? Do we drive up that road and call on Farmer Philip Peters? No, no, we don't. First, we'll investigate the other fork in the road. Well, nothing as invigorating as a morning drive in the country, I always say. Only when I think of all the work I have to do on those laboratory reports, I can enjoy it as I should. Look, Fern, over there. Oh, it's a gypsy camp. I thought they were located somewhere in this section. Now this motor trip is beginning to make a little sense. Listen. Can you hear music? Oh, yes. It's nice, isn't it? Nice. Fern, that's the same music I picked up on the telepathic indicator just before the crash last night. Oh, gosh, Jim. Do you suppose all this adds up to something? I think so, Fern. Come on. Jim, do you think it's a good idea to go barging in on these gypsies? Well, we'll soon find out. Look, Jim. Yeah? There's an old gypsy woman standing in front of that first tent. She's giving us a dirty look. Let's see if she'll give us any information. Stop! Open the door! Stop music! Stop music, I say! Make circle, gypsies! Make wrong circle! Oh, Jim, I don't like this. Those gypsies look menacing. What do strangers want from gypsies? A little information. Oh. Oh, you want fortune told. Across all Yanina's palm with silver, and she will call upon the spirits of all Romany. Uh, no, no, you don't understand. It's uh, not about myself I wish to ask. Uh, what then? What you want? I'm making inquiries about the accident that occurred near here last night. Gypsies don't know, don't know anything. Did two men come here last night about 7 o'clock? You're from police? Yes, I'm connected with the police. So you'd better tell me what you know. Men are Men are What's she saying, Jim? I don't know. Answer in English. What did you say? Gypsies know nothing. Go away. Let gypsies alone. Not until you answer my question. Were there two men here last night? Yes. One man come, the other wait in car. What did the man want? He want gypsy to tell him future. Yes, and what did you tell him? What can I tell him? He is cursed. He has no future. How did you know that? You didn't read that in his palm. I will say nothing more. Then I think you better come with us. Maybe the police can make your talk down at headquarters. No, no. I'm in your I'm in your Speak in English. The accursed must die. You cannot blame gypsies. Maybe not. But you know more than you're telling. Oh, Jim, I think we'd better get out of go here. Go away. Gajo, go away. Things will go better with you if you'll come along with us quietly. No, no. I will not go. You, Gajo, always try to make trouble for gypsies. Oh, Jim, come on. Those men have clubs and they're closing in on us. Go away. Go away. Gajo. Baldo! Baldo! Mikam Gajo! Mikam Gajo! Come on, you're 